is so wizarding. This is Mike Burton from Genuine Chit Chat, and you're listening to So Wizard, where the magic happens. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastare, you are listening to So Wizard. You are thinking, you said people gonna die? The only podcast to make the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. There'll be no one to stop us this time. What's going on, everybody? It is time for episode number 227 of the So Wizard podcast. I'm your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-hosts are the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. 227, it's like a slice of heaven. And the expert, Mr. Marquis, Markellis Reagans. What is going on? I hope everyone is having a good week. You are listening to So Wizard Podcast. Three friends discuss the world of nerd podcasting weekly. This week, we've got some news to discuss with a lot of new movie trailers. And then we're going to talk all about Marvel Studios' big week with a Captain Marvel trailer a video game trailer, some Black Panther news, and the big one, Avengers 4 trailer dropping. But before we get into all that, how are we doing this week? Mark, I am very disappointed that we did not remember to collect up Jack Hay sound drops for episode 227. No, no. Oh, what a disappointment. It didn't even occur to me until <laughs> I, the word seven came out of my mouth. It's like, ah, oh, crap. But other than that, how are you this week? Now I feel like doing my Jack Hay impersonation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> For the four people listening who get that, I'm sure they're laughing as hard as we are. Yo, shout out to Regina King from 227, who got nominated for a Golden Globe. I got nominated for two Golden Globes for a movie and a TV show. So, uh, yeah, shout out to her. Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I got to, again, use my movie pass. I was, I was, I was allowed the experience and the pleasure of actually getting a ticket through my movie pass. And, uh, it was for Robin Hood, ironically. (laughs) I'm sorry. It was the only thing that was available. (laughs) Um, but yeah, you know, Robin Hood actually wasn't, I was expecting a dumpster fire and it really wasn't that bad. It's not good, but it wasn't that bad. So, uh, thank you, movie pass. I salute you for now. We are cool this week. We'll see how next week goes. <laughs> awesome. What about you, Aubrey? What is going on in the life of Aubrey? Um, I was paid out of GameStop. What does that mean? So I got a new job, and um, I gave my notice at GameStop, and they decided to pay me out for my last two weeks. Um, so now I'm doing nothing for the next two weeks until I start my new job. Well, congratulations on getting a new job and getting out of GameStop. Thanks. I'm I'm super excited. Um, I'm nervous about my new job, but I'm super excited to get out of GameStop. Please don't rehire me ever again, GameStop. <laughs> let it go. Like be it. like Frozen. Remember what Frozen says? Just let me go. <laughs> don't work. Don't work at GameStop. That's what it's. Yeah, like. Game, <laughs> GameStop right. and and me have a relationship like Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't quit me. <laughs> let me go. <laughs> yeah, my my relationship with GameStop is kind of like Jews in the Holocaust. Never again. Wow. <sighs> Oof. Yeah. That's that's a bad one. That's huh? that's that's so harsh. You, Wow. Yikes. Well, that's good. It's good that you are out of GameStop. Uh, hopefully, you know, things will improve. They can only go up from here. Man. Exactly. <laughs> you might even start liking video games again. I mean, yeah, I know. That was like my problem is I can never stop buying them, but then I never had time to play them. So now I have all these games in two weeks to be able to actually play them. Kind of excited. Oh, that means when you come back next week, your eyes are going to be all bloodshot. Thumbs going to be all disabled. You playing video games for two weeks? Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Joy? Uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> mm-hmm, that sounds about I, right. Yeah, I've been working myself into an early grave, but 
I did get uh, concert tickets this past week for this upcoming summer. Oh, nice. Spice Girls? Uh, no, they're yeah. not touring in America. Oh. They're only touring in the United <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> Is it for um, uh, Behad Bihabi? <laughs> 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 no, though Bad Baby was touring in Australia, and I definitely suggested that to uh, Wayne and Paul as a bonding experience for them, our friends from the Countdown podcast. They will never forgive you for sending them there. If well, that, if that Paul was the case. might not. I don't know about Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I got tickets for uh, Queen and Adam Lambert touring oh, uh, this summer. Nice. Two of the surviving members of Queen and uh, Adam Lambert from American Idol touring, uh, playing the songs of Queen. So it's going to be my wife and I's wedding anniversary slash birthday slash Valentine's Day. Slash <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything uh, present rolled into one since it's very expensive, but I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. It's a very exciting time for us. That's awesome, dude. I remember you saying that if they went on tour, you were going to break out the credit cards to uh, go see them. So I'm glad you got right, the tickets. Right. Well, this, the thing, the only thing that stinks is that Maiden, uh, Iron Maiden's touring this summer as well. Right. They're doing a Greatest Hits tour, and they're playing a lot of songs that neither myself nor my wife have seen them play live, like uh, Flight of Icarus and uh, Ace is High, which is one of my favorite Maiden songs. But we kept holding off on buying tickets because we're obviously not made of money and we can only really afford to go to one concert a year for like these bigger <laughs> concerts that cost a lot of money. Right. And, and usually you guys go to Maiden. Yeah. We've, we've seen Maiden twice in the last two years. So we were like, all right, we'll hold off. We'll hold off. If Queen announces a tour. Cause Brian may had hinted at it. And then it, like, you never know. So if they announce a tour, we're going to go to that instead. And then they did. And I got the tickets with Maiden's already sold out everywhere. So, the actual Maiden show in our area is the night before Queen. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Uh, so I was like, why don't we make a weekend of it? <laughs> <laughs> and I logged in to uh, Ticketmaster, and there were no tickets left for Maiden. And I went on StubHub, and they were way too expensive. Yeah. So, yeah, we did that for Maiden at Madison Square Garden a few years ago, where we spent like almost a mortgage payment Jeez. going to that concert and uh it was worth it but we can't really do that again yeah so. i was gonna say that you're you're good you're you're good for that one you gotta go check out queen oh you know they're riding high on that bohemian rhapsody wave so you definitely gotta go check them out this year yeah i'll probably just be crying for the whole concert but it's okay <laughs> i'm i'm happy i don't know if they'll play princes of the universe but yeah. <laughs> we'll see awesome so now we've got all that talk about us out of the way. Let's talk about us. Markellis, tell us, Markellis, where people can find more So Wizard Podcast. All right. So everybody can go to SoWizardPodcast.com where you will find new episodes every week along with movie reviews from yours truly. You'll find Netflix and Amazon streaming picks from our buddy, the awesome Adam Mollyhawk. Uh, you also find our merchandise there so you can purchase some of our t-shirts. Look good while you're representing the show. Um, another great way to support our show is by doing your Amazon shopping through the link that we keep right on the website. Click on that big A, do your shopping, receive your products, and that way you will be helping out our tiny little show here. Uh, you can also find our social media links there. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review while you're there. Uh, you can also subscribe to us on the Stitcher Radio app for your tablet or smartphone, Podbean, Google Play Music, and you can stream our show through Spotify. Uh, you can also support our show through our Patreon account, Patreon dot com backslash so was your podcast donate a little money and you can receive some extra content shout out to all of our podcasting buddies back to you joey i am thanos give me all your special rocks i love that <laughs> yeah that's one of my favorites <laughs> All right, Mark Ellis, we got a lot to talk about. So drop the news drop and let's get dropping like it's hot. Yo, pump it up. It's time for the news. Yo, we getting ready to bring you the news, boy. All right, so this week in nerdy news. It was a lot of trailers that dropped this week for some reason. Uh, before we move on to the big ones, let's uh, let's talk about some of the uh, 
Let's talk about some of the other things that went down. With all of the trailers dropping this week, a lot of them from Marvel, uh, DC decided that they needed to get in the action. You know, they had to. They had something to say. They have movies coming out too. Uh, somewhere in my office, there's a list of about 20 of them that have been announced already. Uh, but to add to that list, we have Plastic Man. Uh, that is in development. It's going to be written by a hot young upcoming writer named Amanda Adoko, who uh, made it into the blacklist with a um, with another script that she did. And suddenly she is like uh, she's like the hot new thing. So she's going to be doing the Plastic Man movie. Uh, I don't really know that much about the character. Uh, I know he's kind of goofy and I know he stretches a lot, but I don't remember seeing any comic books or cartoons or anything else about Plastic Man. So let's go around the room and see. What do you guys think about a, a, a DC cinematic universe Plastic Man? Let's start with Aubrey. I've heard of Plastic Man. I haven't read anything on Plastic Man, though. I've just seen him in like small things. I don't really know how I feel about it. I think DC has a weird approach to their entire entertainment, their whole universe. I feel like they make really weird decisions. So I'm not too surprised seeing that it's a DC decision. I guess we'll see. Yeah, you would think that they would spend more time focusing on all the other projects that they've already announced instead of announcing a new one. I think there's, they already have enough stuff on their plate. When do you think they'd choose something more mainstream, too? Yeah, I mean, they're not doing that well. So why would you choose something that's so small that everybody is going to be like, who the hell's Plastic Man? Mm -hmm. You know, I I feel like they could expand on a lot of different things that are going to be more mainstream and going to help out their universe and build it and actually get them some attention. But instead, they're just making bad business decisions. (laughs) Well, we'll see. We'll see how it pans out. It, it, it They might actually be onto something. Maybe. Joey, what about you, dude? What do you know about Plastic Man? Is this something we should be excited for? Uh, no. <laughs> Not at all? I don't know. I guess so. I don't It's hard to get excited for any of these DC movies because every week they seem to announce something else. Mm-hmm. How many movies are we up to now? Can we get a list of these movies? All right, let's, let's try to do this together. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right. Joker. Yep. Is coming out. Yep. Yes. Shazam and Aquaman are coming out. So that's three. Wonder <laughs> Woman 84 is coming out. That's four. Right. Uh, then we got Blue Beetle. Oh, that's right. We, they just announced that last week. Yeah, we talked about that last <laughs> week. Blue Beetle. Then we got Plastic Man. Then we have Birds of Prey. We have Harley Quinn solo movie with the Joker. Uh, uh, new, new Gods. Right. New Gods. Yep. There's still a Flashpoint that's supposed to be happening. Yep. Flashpoint. The Batman. Uh, yep. Uh, Suicide. Stroke. <laughs> They're not doing that. Isn't there, isn't there something with uh, Green Lantern? Oh, yep, Green shit. Lantern. That's right. The Green Lantern Corps. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Cyborg. <laughs> no, Cyborg is, I'm pretty sure that's off the table. Uh, Justice but, League Dark. Uh, the Rock still has his uh, Black Adam movie that is supposed yeah. to be coming out. Yep. So that's about 16 announced <laughs> projects. <laughs> And I'm sure we missed a couple in there. Oh, there was a Zatanna movie separate from Justice League Darks. So that's 17. Oh, and there was um, uh, a Supergirl. Did we already say right. that? 18. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, did we mention a Robin or no, the Nightwing one? Oh, 19. <laughs> that's right. Let's, let's let him just keep announcing stuff. You know, we'll just see what happens. But like... Put put shit out, right? <laughs> I don't even care about it being connected. Like, just make good movie. <laughs> I don't even, I don't give a fuck anymore about connected universes. I want Marvel to stay connected. Everything else, just make good fucking movies. Right. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't build I don't. a solid foundation first. Like they just keep announcing shit and then they don't fall. They either follow through and it's crap because it's half assed because all of their budget is elsewhere. Or they just, it, it falls off the radar. Just fucking produce something that's good. Stop. I don't care how many projects they have that they think they want to do. Like, just to pick something and make it good. Build a solid foundation. And then the funding will come. I just, I think they have probably the same thing that Marvel has. And I know Kevin Feige's talked about it, is that they have a, a whiteboard in the office where people write <laughs> characters and ideas for things on this whiteboard and they have like a an idea vault i guess for lack of a better term of 
characters and things they want to work on. Yeah. I feel like they probably have the same thing in the WB office, but they have a leak. So somebody just happens, some like intern on their way walking by just happens to write, oh, Blue Beetle, and just keep walking to the bathroom. And then somebody leaks it to all the website. <laughs> I think there's someone there who's like writing shit up, up on his board just to see who's going to leak it. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder, right. I wonder if I put Plastic Man up, if that's going to make the news. Scribble, scribble, scribble. <laughs> and two days later, Plastic Man movie's coming out. God. Well, when we see the sites talking about an Apache chief movie, we know <laughs> <laughs> shit's gone wrong. Justice League Detroit or something. That's right. Give me my Batmite movie. That's all I want. God. I want Danny DeVito as Batmite. So, yeah, I guess I'll get excited if it when I see a trailer. That's when I'm going to start getting excited about DC projects from now on. Yeah. There you go. Because this is all just farts in the wind at this point. <laughs> Yeah, because no one's even talking about that fucking Nightwing movie anymore. It's just like yeah, gone. We, it was like two years ago we started talking about that. <laughs> Kalel, no. That's for, that's for you, Warner Brothers DC. Get it together. <laughs> All right. Okay. So in other news, we got to look at a, a poster for a hit video game movie. I'm sorry, a, a movie based on a hit video game that will be coming out. Uh, about a year, a little, little less than a year, in November, Sonic the Hedgehog movie. They put out the poster. They keep Sonic in shadow, so you don't really get a good look at his face. All you get is the outline. Uh, and it was a motion poster too, so you get to see him like running around and catching, uh, you know, the golden rings. Uh, so Joey, what did you think about Sonic the Hedgehog poster? Sonic's arms are not freaking blue. <laughs> it looks terrible. What? It looks awful. What do you mean? It looks like a computer generated Sonic. Oh, it looks doesn't look anything like Sonic. It looks like some guy in a furry suit with like muscles. <laughs> it looks really bad. I'm not feeling this at all. On top of the fact that like Detective Pikachu trailer like ate its lunch already. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't know anything about Sonic at all. I mean, I'm sure I played it on my Sega at some point when I was younger, but I don't know. It looked like a blue hedgehog to me. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Aubrey, what about you? What did you think of that Sonic poster? It's okay looking. I love Sonic, and I grew up with Sonic, but I think this is the worst idea for a movie oh, ever. Wow. No uh, no sneak peek of Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, huh? <sighs> well... One highlight about this movie is that it is being executive produced by Tim Miller, who did the Deadpool movie. So that may be some talent behind it. Well, you know who executive produced all all the Transformers movies? Steven Spielberg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fair point. Fair point. But Steven Spielberg was not out talking about uh, the issues with the movie, except for when he fired uh, Megan Fox. That was the only time you ever heard him say anything about Transformers. Yeah, and when he cashed the checks, that was it. Right. <laughs> but Tim Miller said um, in an article, uh, when a poster came out, he said that they were having some discussions with the company about Sonic's eyes. Yeah. So, I don't know. Is, is Sonic's eyes freaking blue? Is that? Is that? No. The no. <laughs> <laughs> but they're big, so I don't know. We'll see. I know his arms aren't blue. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, well, they look blue in the poster, so. Uh, I know. I guess <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris Chan. Sorry. I'm awaiting the inevitable Christian <laughs> meltdown. <laughs> I don't know who's getting pepper sprayed this time. But. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, sorry. So that's it for like the, the, the news news. Let's talk about a couple of trailers that came out before we right. get into the big ones. So we got our second look at the next Godzilla movie, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Uh, they released a trailer with a little bit more Millie Bobby Brown, her prerogative, and a lot more monsters so uh it it just looks like disgusting destruction of the world if that was happening in real life i would just say the monsters can have the earth i'll just i'll just take i'll just take the inevitable fate of uh being eaten by one uh so what did you guys think of the trailer arbery what did you think of godzilla 2 electric boogaloo i thought it was fantastic i am so excited <laughs> for this movie oh yeah what was your favorite part of it um, all of it. Really? Wow. King King Ghidorah is like I'm so excited about King Ghidorah. It looks fucking amazing. Nice, nice. All right, what about you, Joy? 
Uh, it looks cool. I like the parts of the monsters. I am not very <laughs> excited about the parts of the people. Like, why is the coach from Friday Night Fights like running around? Friday Night Lights uh, running around. I've had enough of Millie Bobby Brown holding her ears and screaming for a lifetime. <laughs> and that's from somebody who's a huge Stranger Things fan, but I'm sure she can do more than that. Yeah, so the monsters look awesome. King Ghidorah looks fantastic. The destruction they're causing when they're fighting looks fucking great. Oh. I hope it's not going to be like Godzilla 2014, where it's a bunch of talking, also sometimes <laughs> featuring Godzilla in the background. Yeah, one of the things I noticed about this one is that they actually called it Godzilla 2. Like they, yeah. they're saying, yes, this is a sequel to the movie that nobody liked. <laughs> People liked it. They just didn't love it. I liked it. I thought it was a, a really cool movie. It, it could have been a little bit better, but I did enjoy it. And yeah, the destruction of these of this world just looks insane. Um, one of my my favorite part of the trailer is that Ken Watanabe gets another like line in the trailer. We will be his pets. I like that they they gave it back to him. Um, I'm not sure who's directing it, but yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm ready for it. And then speaking of uh, the DCEU. We got a movie trailer for a movie that it looked super familiar when it came out. I'm like, I feel like I've seen this movie already. Uh, a couple in a small town, on a farm, a rocket ship lands close to them. They talk about how they dreamt about having a child and they pull a baby out of a rocket. Little mop top boy. They grow up, treat, treat him like their own. Uh, and the kid starts developing powers. Uh, it's a movie called Brightburn, and it's from executive producer James Gunn. What did you guys think of this trailer? Let's start with you, Joey. Uh, I thought it looked pretty cool, but <laughs> it's kind of hard to parody the <laughs> Man of Steel being all <laughs> dour and depressing by being dour and depressing. So <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone's going to get killed by a tornado in it or uh, you know, fail to save a bus of kids. We'll see. But I don't know. It, it seems like a cool concept. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. It looks cool. We'll have to see a little bit more of it. It's got to be pretty low budget, though, right? Uh, I, I would think so, but it's opening on Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Yeah. yeah that, that's what kind of s- struck me as what? Because mm-hmm. it seems like it's going to be rated R, too. Yeah. So, yep. So an R rated like horror type movie with a big wide opening on Memorial Day. Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> like, like what is happening? I don't, yeah, I don't get what this whole thing is about either. Aubrey, what about you? What did you think of this trailer? I thought it was creepy. Yeah. It, was, I don't know, it made me uncomfortable. <laughs> we'll have to pencil in a guest for that week. <laughs> yeah. But it was really scary. Made me anxious. No, the trailer looks like it looks exactly like it's um, cutting room footage from man of steel. Except for Clark, only you only see Clark as a kid, and he decides that he's going to be evil, and that's and you know that's it's a unique concept, but it's something that like I feel like I've seen this. I'm sure I've read a Superman story before, when or like a Superman type of story where they've taken a hero and made him evil, or made him you know really not in control of his powers, but still growing up on a farm, still having like the Ma and Pa Kent thing. I feel like I've read that before somewhere, so it doesn't seem like that new. Joey, can you confirm any of that at all? Of course. Uh, that's like a tenant of Superman Elseworld stories is his rocket landing somewhere else. And whether it's in Gotham and Martha and Thomas Kent to raise him or anything in Russia and, and Superman Red Sun. There's a million variations of that. So it's not exactly an evil Superman we've seen in Injustice. And it's not uh, it's not a new concept. <laughs> at all it's not something we've really seen on film so right so yeah i it, in a way it feels like they're just gonna dive deep into all of the missteps that Zack snyder had for man of steel it's like you oh you want to see superman snap next now we're gonna see him snap a bunch of necks but as a yep. as a 12 year old kid <laughs> yeah he's not gonna save a bus of kids he's gonna destroy that bus full of kids that's the movie that we're looking forward to and it's coming out memorial day so uh wow all right and then in a final uh, speaking of comic book adaptation trailers, uh, we got our first look at the Umbrella Academy. Uh, not a movie, a uh, TV show that's going to be on Netflix. We've talked about it before, uh, based on a very popular comic book. And uh, I don't, I, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve my my opinions. Uh, Aubrey, what did you think of the Umbrella Academy trailer? I thought it looked really cool. I'm actually kind of excited to see it. Mm-hmm. What about you, Joy? 
Ah, uh, looks fantastic. It looks just like the book. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> now, have you read? Is is that is it still going on? Is that story that book still going on, or did they? No, it's like a it? series of mini series. So okay, that's I don't I know if they've started a new one, but there's at least two. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought, and that's and it's old, right? It's probably like seven years old, eight years old, maybe more than that, because it came out when I was still regularly buying comics every week. So it might be like ten years at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah, I remember. I never read the book, but I remember it, it made a little bit of noise because the guy from My Chemical Romance was behind it, and uh, you know that his name brought a little, uh, I don't know, a little spotlight to the book. But apparently, it was really good. And um, when I saw this trailer, I'm like, this looks amazing. This looks really, really good. Uh, it was weird to see Ellen Page in another school for gifted kids. That was a little odd. Uh, but shout out to Mary J. Blige. I was just going to say, <laughs> did you see Mary J. Blige there? Yeah, I'm like right there. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Mary J. Blige with a gun. All right, I'm down. I'm down. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I am ready for this. Um, and I'm not going to read any of the books. I'm not going to read any synopsis at all. I'm just going to watch the show and take it at, uh, at face value. But. I think the show will definitely uh, diverge or change stuff a little bit from the book, even if you wanted to read it, Mark, because it gets really weird. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Maybe a little too weird for mainstream audiences. Not in a bad way. Just it's it's a weird book. Um, that's just how he writes. Ger- Gerard Way writes comics. He's a good comic book writer, but what he writes is always trippy, weird, uh, vertigo-y mm-hmm. comics. Okay. For lack of a better term. So um, that's great if that's what you're into. If you're not, you're not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know how it's going to go to screen, but it looks really cool. It looks pretty accurate in the trailer. So let's go. <laughs> Is My Chemical Romance still a thing? No, they broke up uh, years ago. Oh, well, it's good he had something to fall back on. Right. You know, one of the things that I absolutely loved about this trailer is that you see these kids wearing these masks, like these Robin-type masks, mm-hmm. and they actually have, like, the white eyes, like they do in the comic books. Like, I've never, that would never work on film, ever, uh, but for some reason, in 2018, it looks like it's going to work, because I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't work on film like 20 years ago, but now, you know, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. They'll, they'll do, do whatever weird <laughs> shit they want. Like, can you imagine if Michael Keaton was wearing like the Batman mask and it just had white eyes? Yeah, right. Yeah, that never, that'd never happen. Um, so, yeah, shout out to them for pushing the uh, comic book to live action line a little bit, uh, a little bit closer together. I'm going to be sad when this completely flops, but <laughs> <laughs> at least it'll be cool for one season. Yeah. Uh, all right, perfect. All right, so then um, that's it for like the regular news. And now we can get into Marvel's Big Week. All right, so we got a bunch of Marvel stuff this week. Let's start with Captain Marvel Trailer 2. What did you think, Aubrey? It's so good. I'm super <laughs> excited. Uh, all right. <laughs> It's a very strange episode where Aubrey's really happy and right. into things. Is because Game, yeah. GameStop is in a no cloud anymore. <laughs> is there a correlation? <laughs> Aubrey, you, you totally reminded me of uh, James Franco in Spider-Man 3 when he's sitting there eating a pie and he's like, mm, so good. How's the pie? So good. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I'm super excited for Captain Marvel. I absolutely love the Captain Marvel series, I just, I'm so ready. So ready. Oh, I thought it was good, too. (laughs) Wait, all right. Wait a minute, what do you mean? You just thought it was good, Mark? That was it? No, I thought it was amazing. I don't know anything about Captain Marvel at all. Um, So I was really glad to see that this trailer, like, kind of explained who she was, you know, and that she doesn't really know her real identity. That uh, Annette Bening, of all people, showed up in the trailer. Uh, to say that you know she's part squirrel, and um, and I love the fact that uh, no, she's part Cree. Is that what? It, oh yeah, part Cree. Sorry. Yeah. See, again, I know nothing about Captain Marvel, but yeah, I think uh, I like that. Uh, that they really kind of explain what the character was for people like me, and I like the fact that she, you can tell she's a, a person of two worlds. Um, the line where she says, "I'm not going to fight your war, but I'm going to end it," I got chills. And then they just show her blowing shit up. Um, so, yeah, I think it looks really cool. She had a bunch of different looks, more to the story, and they didn't cut out the the sequence of showing her, like, 
getting knocked down, but getting back up in a different stages of her life. I love that from the first trailer, and I'm really glad they kept it in this one. So, uh, yeah, I give it a big old thumbs up. All right, I'm going to be the discerning voice. <laughs> the dissenting voice. Okay. I'm not 100% feeling these trailers. Wow. I'm still excited about it, and I can't wait to see it. I'm going to go see it. I'm sure it'll be great. But I feel like like they're holding back on Captain Marvel, at least, to the point where I can't get excited about anything going on in the trailers. Okay. Like, I, it almost feels like they're not showing stuff to not have spoilers, which is great, but to a point where, like, I can't even get interested in the trailers. They seem kind of dull to me. What? In the scene where her fighting an old lady on a bus? I don't know. Like, her flying around in space, blowing up stuff was cool. Like, I liked that, but everything else has just been, like, talking, talking. You know, she she's all, like, dour. But, like, which makes sense, because Kevin Feige said that this is kind of like a riff on RoboCop. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. He, he RoboCop is one of his favorite movies of all time, and this movie is like a riff on RoboCop. Wow. That's okay. He, yeah. Yeah, I can see that now. Right. So we're only getting, they're really only showing the parts where, you know, before RoboCop realized he sees human. <laughs> mm-hmm. So she's walking around kind of alien and cold, which is fine. But like, I don't know. There's just, I, I haven't felt with these two trailers as anything like fist pumpy where I'm just like, woo, like jump out of my seat excited. I'm excited for the movie. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And we'll, I'll be there day one or two, depending on my schedule at work. But, you know, I'm just not. I'm just not super excited. <laughs> and also probably because it's an origin movie of a brand new character. Yeah. So we have to spend these trailers teaching John Q public what's going on as opposed to just showing you imagery of characters you already love and have emotional attachment to. So that might be a part of it. But I don't know. I'm just not really feeling it. Yeah. Well, there's not going to be any characters that we love in the 90s except for, uh, except for Blockbuster. Nick Fury. Well, yeah. And you get plenty of Nick Fury in here. Blockbuster video. <laughs> yeah, this is the character I love in the nineties. You get plenty of Nick Fury in the trailer. Him petting a yeah, cat. Yeah, I guess. I think it looks. I think it looks cool. And yes, I am John Q. Public because I know nothing about Captain Marvel. So yes, educate me, please. All right. So then the next trailer is Marvel's Ultimate Alliance Three, a video game that's going to be exclusively on the Nintendo Switch, um, and it's coming out next year. And the trailer looks like it shows a lot of. Characters that you know from the movies mixed with characters that are from the comic books that haven't made quite the leap into movies yet. It looks like a fine, looks like a very fine line between uh, the cinematic universe and a comic book universe. All right, so what did you guys think of this trailer? Let's start with uh, Aubrey. I'm super excited. I absolutely love the first two. Um, I think that this game is going to be fantastic. It's going to have a huge following because the the Ultimate Alliance games in the first place are just, they're hard to come by because they're so popular and they're so good. So I, I'm excited. I think that this is probably one of the only sequels I've been excited for in a long time. All right, cool. Well, what about you, Joy? Oh, my God. Let's go. I'm so excited for this. I, I'm already planning on trying to get a Switch. <laughs> As we've discussed in the show, and this just like confirms how much I need to get one because uh, I love the series going all the way back to X Men Legends uh, on PlayStation Two and Xbox One. Uh, Ultimate Alliance I had on 360, both of them, and I just got them on PlayStation Four last early last year and was playing through them with my son. So they're awesome. Um, they're relics of a bygone age where. You- <laughs> You're know, playing Ultimate Alliance and you have, uh, at the time, you know, you had Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men characters with the Avengers. So that was that was interesting. But now, you know, you can use Alliance 3 as kind of a barometer of, you know, what maybe is cooking in the kitchen for Marvel. But much like Lego Marvel superheroes a long time ago had some random characters where you were like, wait, what? And then they became MCU things like Jessica Jones. <laughs> Ah, nice. And uh, Squirrel Girl and other stuff that they included that were somewhat head-scratching at the time, but then they turned into characters they were using. So uh, I'm expecting we'll see Shang-Chi in this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and and it's, it's cool to see, you know, from a video game perspective, it's cool to see the X-Men characters back with the Avengers and Guardians because 
you know, they were not in Marvel versus Capcom Infinite at all because of the licensing stuff going on at the time. Now that Marvel owns, well, Disney owns Marvel and Fox um, to get the X-Men characters back is awesome. And it's classic cartoonish comic X-Men with Wolverine cutting up the Sentinel. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always, I know that they've had like you know, two very successful movies plus crossover in Infinity War. But it's always so weird to me to see Guardians of the Galaxy like elevated to <laughs> like this high level. Yeah, it starts off with Gamora talking. I know it's just so strange to me because Gamora, I used to lo- I've always loved those characters. And even when they had the team that came, the movie team come out in comics, it's not, wasn't exactly like the most popular book on the stands. So yep, it's just crazy to me, but here we are. Yeah. No, I love me some Nebula. So, uh, more of it. Uh, I will yeah. probably never play this video game at all, but, uh, I'm glad you for could it. though. It's not that, hard to play it's just <laughs> run around and beat stuff up it's like uh you ever play gauntlet oh god it was like forever ago yeah it's kind of like that <laughs> it's the best way i can describe it yeah i think i'm i'm too old for those type of games now man just looking at the footage i'm like i i can't tell what's going on it's just a, <laughs> it's a lot of explosions <laughs> mark has a seizure <laughs> seriously i'm old i'm an old man all right okay so then in awards news Shout out to Marvel for producing probably one of the best movies of the year in Black Panther because it got nominated for Best Picture at the Golden Globes. The first comic book movie to ever get nominated for Best Picture. Of course, this movie is amazing. It better get nominated or else there would have been a riot. Uh, I think it's awesome. And it got nominated for some other things too. But the fact that it snuck its way into Best Picture is amazing. Um, What do you guys think of Black Panther getting that Golden Globe nod? Uh, Aubrey. Um, <clears throat> I'm not surprised. This movie got a lot of hype. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, I'm not surprised. Now, do you think it's deserving of best picture of the year? Um, you can say no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I can't really remember too much of what came out this year. I, I could see it being, chosen as maybe one of them i don't know if i would find it to be the best just because i don't remember everything else it went up against yeah yeah well i wouldn't say the best but probably one of the best yeah i mean it 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 was good (laughs) i did like it i like i i guess i feel like i feel like it got a lot of hype because it made uh, certain social groups <laughs> and and not just one i mean like a bunch of different social groups i feel like it it put them into power and so i feel like there was a lot of attention from that not necessarily attention on the movie itself and the writing and you know um the direction not the movie as a whole I feel like just the attention it gave to all of the different social groups that they put into power, like women including, I feel like that's what gave it all the hype that it got instead of it getting hype for being a good movie. Mm, Okay. All right. It's a fair point. Fair point. I totally disagree, but it's fair. Joey, (laughs) what about you, dude? (laughs) Um, Yeah, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting that it got the nomination. Um, I don't think it's going to win. I want it to win, obviously. Um, I thought it was a really good movie. It doesn't seem like the type of movie to win these kind of awards because I actually liked it and it wasn't boring. Right. So, (laughs) and to be fair, the Golden Globes did give a best picture Golden Globe to Avatar. So they aren't against giving it to (laughs) popular movies. That whole freaking establishment is all popular movies man it has nothing to do with like it has very very little to do with like actual i think the golden globes is more leaning towards popular stuff because they want to get celebrities and buzz about their show of course people can watch because they have the celebrities there i think the oscars doesn't give a shit and will nominate like the most boring fucking movies (laughs) in the face of the earth and they don't care (laughs) so Mm -hmm. that's very true that's very true and they don't give a fuck I think I I think that I would like Bohemian Rhapsody to be um, picture of the year. 
and be not be. It, see, I'm getting tripped up because I'm so worried that everybody's going to get all butt hurt. I think I think that um, I like Black Panther and all of the characters in Black Panther better in Avengers. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that's how I feel about it, and so. I think Bohemian Rhapsody, I loved Bohemian Rhapsody. I think it was fantastic. I think that Remy Malek did a phenomenal job. And I would, I, I feel as though that was probably one of my favorite movies of the year. Whereas Black Panther, I feel like was so far gone, not gone, but it was so far ago that it was more like towards the beginning of the year. And I liked those characters better in the writing and the direction of Avengers. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. I definitely like the fight scenes a little bit more in the other movies. Uh, But, you know, we'll have plenty of time to talk about best and worst of the year uh, coming up. Uh, Right, right, right. The accomplishment of this movie is that out of all of the Best Picture nominations in years and years and years, this is the first time they've actually said this comic book movie, full-on comic book movie, a guy dressed like a giant cat gets nominated for Best Picture of the Year. It's an accomplishment. We need it to win awards because we can't allow Suicide Squad to be the only <laughs> Oscar winning. That's right. Oscar. Well, Dark Knight uh, won uh, Oscar for Heath Ledger. So that, that I mean, that was deserved. But yeah. nobody really thinks of it that way in terms of like the competing universes. Suicide Squad has the only award. So. The only Academy Award. Yeah. Black Panther is going to sweep everything this year. I can't wait. It should even if it doesn't win um, Best Picture, which it probably won't because it's a good movie that people will actually want to watch, um, it should win for costumes and, uh, you know, probably for uh, Best Song, too. Yeah. Was there some other song? Oh, no, because there's Star is Born songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> well, it mo- most likely to win for Best Costume, uh, uh, probably Best God, I was gonna say best screenplay, but probably not that one either. I don't know. Costumes is a lock. We'll just we'll just leave it at costumes for now. Uh, it's just it's weird that they didn't nominate like best director, but any acting categories or director, but it got best picture. So yeah, I don't know. I just I really wanted to win, but I don't think it will. Whatever is the most boring movie will win. <laughs> probably, probably. And and Aubrey, I just wanted to say to your point, um, Crazy Rich Asians made a lot of money here in America because, you know, it was something that represented, uh, it was a film that represented an audience that doesn't really get to see themselves in that kind of light in a big Hollywood movie before. So it did make a lot of money in China. That movie bombed (laughs) because seeing an all Asian cast in in a movie is nothing new to them. Isn't that just a romantic comedy though? Yeah. It's just like a regular. Oh, cool. That's they make those all the time in China. That's all they make. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that's where a lot of the hype for Black Panther came from was not actually the the movie as a whole, which I think is a good movie. I think I just like the characters more when they're more developed in the Avengers movie. Yeah. I think, you know, I love Cherie. Absolutely love her. I, lo- I love all of the characters. I think just as an origin story, I always find myself not enjoying origin movies as much as I do the sequels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I love sequels a lot more than, than the original ones, too. X-Men 2 being one of them. Spider-Man 2. Yeah, it, go, it goes on. Breaking 2. <laughs> and pretty soon Godzilla 2. That's right. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, so for the final, big final enchilada to go through all of this, they heard your cries. You begged. You pleaded. You demanded. You got it. All over your face, Avengers Endgame trailer. All right, so let's go around the room. What do you guys think of it? Let's start with Joey. Oh, it was great. Oh, that one you liked? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Even though it was a lot of talky talky and no, nothing blowing up, you still liked it. Right. But it showed me what I needed to see, which was, you know, what's going on with these characters after the snapping and everything's in a horrible, terrible, depressing place. And now we're going to get out of it. Uh, the snapping. Now that we've seen the the happening, that that and the fapping, <laughs> it, it takes on a whole new meaning now. That's right. All right. So, Aubrey, what about you? What did you think of the trailer? It was um, a good first trailer. Yeah, like a, a good teaser to let you know that there's a movie coming out next year. E- yeah, I mean that's how I felt about it. Was that it was just a teaser? I didn't feel like it was 
a trailer really it 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 didn't hint at anything it didn't really show too much of anything i mean the only the only real thing it showed was that ant-man is somehow communicating with them yep so i mean that's really all you get out of it i got i got a few different things out of it the captain america knows how to shave which is cool this one this one do the uh the breaking hearts of, of millions of women all over the world shaving off that beard um but yeah, I liked the trailer too. I thought it was actually, I honestly didn't even want a trailer. Like with all of the hype of everybody wondering, when's the trailer going to come out? Like they don't need to sell me on the second Avengers movie. I'm going to go see it. You know what I'm saying? I don't even really need a trailer. All I need is the the name of the movie and a date and that's it. I'm, I'm there day one. Uh, but that being said, I did like the little teases that they showed. I like seeing uh, Nebula again. I like seeing Tony seeing what his situation was. I like that the whole thing was very dark and very depressing, except for the end of it, which was perfect, perfectly timed. I love seeing Paul Rudd be a goofball uh, in this world, in his deep, dark, depressing world. Uh, so what was your favorite part of the trailer, Joey? Uh, I actually really liked the beginning with uh, Tony Stark stuck in the ship. Yeah. And uh, he's like, said that he's going to die. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's going to dream about Pepper Potts. And that hit me right in the feels, man. <laughs> Though that may have been like a trap of like from Thanos to like trap him in hell because he has to dream about Gwyneth Paltrow forever. Oh, but. geez, dude. Come on. <laughs> I really don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aubrey, what about you? What was your favorite part of that trailer? I don't, I don't know if I had a favorite, really. Um, I guess maybe the end where you see that Ant-Man somehow got out. Yeah. Um, it made me interested. So I don't know. Yeah, I like seeing uh, Peggy Carter. I thought that was pretty cool. And Captain America rolling a tear. That's when you know shit gets real. And yeah. Thor preparing for the <laughs> hottest rap battle. <laughs> Someone actually wrote lyrics. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wrote lyrics that I was fucking dying. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, did you notice that uh, Shir- Shiri is missing? Yes. I did know that. My heart skipped a beat at first because I thought that was showing that they were dead. And then after the third time I watched it, I'm like, oh, that just means that they're missing. So that's fine. Well, I guess they would just assume they're dead. If you haven't seen Spider-Man in like five years, I guess it's pretty safe to assume he didn't make it. So. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. go ahead. I was going to say they, they must not have found like a pile of dust or anything where she was. So I'm assuming she did well, something really smart and is hiding somewhere. <laughs> the last time we saw her, she got kicked out of the way by the... Um, was it Corvus Glaive that was in there? Yeah. Yep. That was the last time we saw her at all. So I don't know where she could be. You know, she could be hiding. She could be running around Wakanda doing something, or she could just be dusted. So no, she's not dusted. She's in the uh, she's in a purple place with the other Panthers. That's what oh, she, is. she she buried herself in like the orange dust, and now she's talking to all <laughs> of the ancestors. The orange dust that's made up of all her friends had died. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they're going to bring everybody back. They're going to oh, fill up God. that tub with all of the dust <laughs> and just have just someone lay inside of it. <laughs> oh, God. I loved seeing Thanos' scarecrow. Yeah, apparently that was in the first movie. Right. It's like a blink and you miss it oh. thing in the background. Like uh, Very sneaky, Russo Brothers. Very sneaky. And uh, Scarlett Johansson is really hot. I'm mad she still has got that blonde hair, though. I was hoping she would have... Uh, should have got it back to the red, to that, that uh, Winter Soldier red. <laughs> what did you think of Hawkeye uh, coming back as Ronan, Aubrey? It was awesome. I wish he'd ditch the wife. I feel <laughs> I like that he... whole storyline's boring. <laughs> I don't think Thanos gave him a choice. <laughs> yeah. I think it's awesome. I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. I love how it, just showing him, you instantly, without saying anything, you know what the story is. You know how he got to that point. Um, and I thought that was really cool. It was good, well, that to, was good to see him back. Kind of his backstory too was that the thing that kept him on the straight and narrow was his family, his wife, and eventually his kids. Mm-hmm. They're gone, and he's going to go back to just being some guy killing <laughs> people in the street dressed like a ninja. So. He's like, uh, so half the population is dead. I'm just going to go kill the other half. Screw it. That's right. <laughs> gonna bring it down by twenty percent. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think of the title? That's interesting. I don't know. I was really mad that it wasn't Annihilation. 
I thought for <laughs> sure that was it. I would have put fucking money on that because they specifically said someone. <laughs> and I was thinking about it today. Someone said, hey, is the name of the sequel inside of the movie? And they said, no, no character says the title of the movie in Infinity War. And he's right. No one does say Avengers Endgame. Well, according to inside sources, up until literally the last minute when they cut the trailer, yep. it was going to either be Annihilation, Endgame, or Infinity Gauntlet. No, there's no way it was going to be Infinity Gauntlet. They that leaked, was one of the three choices. They that leaked that the shit three. a long time ago. There was no way it was going to be that one. That was one of the three, allegedly. <laughs> and they cut it. They argued back and forth and battered it around and finally settled on Endgame. So. It was very close to being Annihilation. Mm-hmm. I wonder how Hawkeye is going to become Ronan. You know, gonna put on a ninja costume and start killing people. Yeah, but, but Ronan's uh, Cree. He, he's he's Cree. So how does? That oh no, happen? it's different. No, it's no. You're thinking of Ronan. Okay. Yes. Yes, I am. You're thinking of Ronan, right. the accuser, and he's Ronin. Yes. <laughs> the ninja. That is correct. Hey, potato, potato. They're both purple. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> won't have a hood on. I was going to say I have no idea how that's going to happen. I I can tell you he's going to win the dance off with uh, Star Lord. <laughs> All right, so we're... I was thinking like maybe they would show him. I mean, oh, but it, it was different characters too. Now that I'm thinking about it, in Guardians of the Galaxy, mm. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm pretty... <laughs> so tired. You're not the only person to have made that mistake. So. I'm going to get massacred for it. No, I'm just glad he's back. The whole team is back. Just in time for them all to die. (laughs) Again. I I don't know. Just don't do anything to Captain America. (laughs) They can kill everybody else. Leave Captain America (laughs) alone. And Nebula. Leave Nebula alone. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we're all on board. Uh, the, The movie is coming out in April. Oh, yeah. Which is very cool. Not May, like I originally thought. I'm going on opening night. I've, I've already decided. I'm taking the day off of work. There you go. <laughs> Me and the kids are going to go to a wild opening night. <laughs> Very excited. Very excited. Yeah, so as soon as tickets go on sale, i got to start planning out how to yep. do that. Cool. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, that's it. Awesome. So, let's wrap things up and uh, see if we got any recommendations for the listeners out there. Aubrey, it's a tragedy for you to see that the dream is over. And GameStop is no more, but what do you have to recommend for the listeners? Um, Super Smash just came out last week. Uh, Super fun. You get like 75 characters. Um, You have to earn a lot of them. Like you start off with maybe like six, maybe it's eight. Um, And you have to earn a whole bunch of characters. It's fun. It brings back like the old feel of Super Smash. Can be kind of difficult, which is kind of cool. I ain't mad that it's difficult. Um... So everybody should go out and uh, get it. I also finished the show Atypical. And um, it's really good. You know, and, and so I read a lot on autism and I watch a lot. And um, I read as many articles as I can. And everybody knows mm-hmm. why and, and about it. And, um, you know, I was so I was watching the show and... It was actually really, really good, and I like how they, the actor, the the main actor doesn't have autism, and I think that he did a phenomenal job portraying it, and um, the relationship that grows between him and the dad is really special, and you know, I just, I, I really enjoyed it, and I heard that season three is coming out, and I'm excited to see what happens. And how many episodes were in the last season? Uh, ten. Okay, perfect. I was going to say, if it's 10 and under, that's doable. I could probably, yeah, I could yeah. probably break through that. I mean, I binged it in maybe two days. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less than that. It's it's super fast, um, and it's good. It, it really is. Uh, there's some sort of... There's some, there's some people that say that there's some things that aren't on point with people on the spectrum, and I, I don't know. I think that the thing that people are missing... It, People are missing that um, everybody on the spectrum is different, and some things may bother one person on the spectrum, whereas they don't on others. And I think that this this show does a really good job at hitting the important notes, and I'm really excited to see how season three goes. Cool. Let's check it out. All right. What about you, Mark Ellis? 
Uh, well, last week I recommended everyone check out the Elseworlds crossover that they were doing on the CW shows. Mm-hmm. And I watched the first episode. And it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh. There's a part of me that's like, I can't believe I live in a world where the Flash and Green Arrow are teaming up with Superman and Supergirl to fight this giant robot in the middle of the city. I'm like, this is fucking amazing. And in between the in between the um, the commercial breaks, there was uh, commercials for Aquaman. So like the nine year old in me, his head is just exploding. Can't believe this is actually happening. But it's cool. It's very cool. So uh, yeah, I definitely recommend. Uh, by the time you hear this, all the episodes will be available. So uh, the first episode is really good. I'm really looking forward to the next two. Sweet. I'll have to check it out. I'm so far behind on those shows. I haven't watched one episode of anything else. <laughs> I'm just watching the uh, the crossover. Nice. Did they stay show Batwoman yet or no? Uh, that's where it ended. Oh, okay. They, yeah, they have, they have to go to Gotham. That's how it ended. And when I said that, I'm like, holy fucking shit, this is amazing. And credits. Yeah, oh, well. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I will suggest that everyone goes to SoWizardPodcast.com where they can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media accounts on the right-hand side of the page. Movie reviews, streaming picks from Adam and Markellis, and so much more. So wizardpodcast.com. Don't forget you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, just about any podcatching app under the sun. We'll be there. Leave us a review on iTunes if you'd like. That helps out the show. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com backslash so wizard podcast where for pledging some monetary support to the show, you can get at least one extra episode every month of the podcast exclusive for our Patreons. This month, you're going to hear the sequel. It's one of the most popular episodes of this podcast ever as we take on Twilight New Moon, which I got to tell you was fucking painful to watch. So this should be an interesting episode for our Patreon. So get on board, patreon.com backslash so wizard podcast. Uh, I will suggest that everybody get themselves in front of Netflix, catch up on Voltron and get ready for season eight. The final season was going to drop this week coming up. I'm excited, but I'm also sad because it is a fucking fantastic show and you should be watching it. I also want to send a huge shout out to France. What? The entire country of France, because it has become our second most popular location for the download of the show <laughs> behind the United States. Where does, uh, where does, um, Myanmar place? Uh, I don't, Myanmar has kind of fallen off a little oh, bit. But come on, Myanmar. Big shout out to all our international listeners, France, Australia, Denmark, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Israel, Myanmar, and Canada. And Mexico. And I'm sure I'm missing some, but we love all of you. I'm waiting for you to say South Korea, and it's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> North <I'm>... Korea <laughs> and... <laughs> and Siberia. Oh, man. That's my... All right. That's my new goal. My new goal is to make this show popular in South Korea. That's my goal. Good, good luck. 2019. <laughs> but that's going to do it for episode 227 of the so wizard podcast next week i think we're going to be jumping into the spider verse the newest animated spider-man movie coming out spider-man colon into the spider verse but for this week i've been your host joey DiCarlo, my co-host the queen of all nerds aubrey litchfield beep boop boop beep <laughs> <laughs> and the expert mr marquis markellis reagans we are in the end game now Wakanda forever. We'll see you next week. Good journey.